Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Strike King. So today we're doing a video on the season two of Picard, an entire season of Picard. Now today wrapped up with episode one ten I mean I'm sorry two ten entitled Farewell. Now I will try to be as open-minded about this season this season as I can and if you guys remember uh, the videos that I've made with the reviews all the way up until now I think I've only given Star Trek Picard season two maybe one good episode the rest of them I thought were tab or it's just tab all right now but the thing is is if if there was ever something that you can apply this phrase to more aptly than uh, than this final episode, it would be this final episode. And that phrase would be, stick the landing. All right? Just, again, you know, this episode, Farewell, wrapped up beautifully uh, the person that is Captain Jean-Luc Picard, or whether I should say Admiral Jean-Luc Picard, or just Jean-Luc Picard, period. When... You look at this episode, when you finish this episode, and by the way, spoilers for anybody who have not seen this episode, please stop the video and go back. But when you think of this episode, right, when you get done watching it, first of all, you're probably going to have a tear in your eye. All right, Any Trekkie who has followed the career of Captain Jean-Luc Picard would definitely feel the, the emotion in this episode. Now... Basically, overall, the theme of this season was basically this. Um, Picard was nearing the end of his life, all right? As he looked around the chateau, he was basically alone. Yes, he had his servants, he had Larys, but there was no one that he was emotionally invested in, romantically or um, intimately, I should say. Now, we know that Captain Picard has had problems connecting with uh with as far as intimacy goes besides vosh and besides the lieutenant commander um and i believe that lady who um that almost looked like a trill but she you know she kind of adapts herself to uh imprints herself to a person besides i believe those three individuals captain picard who has always basically um kept his and of course dr crusher but you know how he felt about that has kind of always kept his emotions of intimacy, you know, to himself. Now, the thing is, is that we find that his brother is gone. We find that, uh, who died a long time ago, his nephew, he has no living relatives anymore. He has no children, all right? And he's finished the events that happened in season one. Uh, although he has an android body, he still feels the the finality of life okay now the thing is is that if you ever look back at Star Trek the next generation whenever Q appeared right that wasn't the time that he uh, was uh, got drawn out of the continuum right I think the episode was uh, Deja Q but no no it wasn't Deja Q Q who but if um, you think about all of the times from the first episode encounter of far point all the way to uh the last episode all good things where q was there every time q made an appearance it was always a lesson that he taught picard no matter how hard the lesson was learned how goofy you know if he turned to mary turned everybody into merry man you know there was always a lesson that he learned and it was always a lesson about himself Okay, now the thing is, is that when Q uh, appears in season two, he's and obviously older. You know, it, it, I don't know how you can apply that to a Q, but he's obviously an older uh, Q to match Picard. But he's dying. We find out. We find out the Q uh, is dying, which is odd because we've never. This is something that we've never experienced with the Q as far as uh, them just living and growing old and dying, you know. We've had Q that has been committed suicide. We've had Q that has been killed by other Q, you know, Q continuum. 
but we never had a cue that you know that just died. It was a that, that was the point, you know. And as a matter of fact, there was a time where they didn't even know what the death of a cue would do to the galaxy, you know. So the thing is, is that we find that Q has started to uh, put Picard through these uh, situations, all right? But we find out also that the Borg has been introduced, uh, time travel uh, to bring back uh, Captain Picard and change the future because what ends up happening is that um, we find out that somehow in the past, Starfleet and everything like that is is has been changed something in the past has been changed starfleet the future of starfleet and everything like that i should say has been changed and they're more of a totalitarian well they are totalitarian and ruthless society even more so than the terrans of the mirror 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 universe now the thing is that q decides to save picard from the auto destruct because the queen comes aboard in a, what looks like a new type of, well, it doesn't look like it's a new type of design of a board ship and begins to take control of the fleet. Picard initiates the self-destruct and Q basically brings everybody back that was there in the main deck of the crew, but in this new reality. Now, of course, time travel shenanigans happen and everything and they go back in time to 2000. 21 or 2022 or something like that and long story short they do everything they in their power to uh, alter the timeline um uh what's his name uh the romulan samurai guy he gets killed in the process of 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 them trying to escape they take the board queen with them she ends up uh convincing Girardi to come close enough to where she could get partially assimilated Girardi kills the queen body uh let's see what else Rios ends up falling for a doctor. Uh, they go through the ice, uh, being captured by ice and everything like that. Seven of Nine and uh, Ralphie form a tighter bond. They're looking for Girardi. Uh, Girardi is trying to absorb heavy metals so that she can continue on assimilating. And we find out that Rene Picard is supposed to uh, travel due to Europa mission. And something is supposed to happen on the Europa mission that is supposed to alter the flow of human civilization now wrapped up in all of this you have the watchers which appeared in the original series with gary seven all right which is played by uh laris or in as a watch yourself talon all right um we have q popping in ever so often to uh kind of menace and kind of lead adam soon on who's by the way in this uh, we get little tidbits that um you know Side note, for anybody who's also been watching my Picard Season 2 reviews, you, you guys should also know that I made a few predictions early on in the season that turned out to be uh, rather accurate, okay? Um, one of those things was the eugenics wars, and if Adam Song was supposed to be the person who engineered the Superman or, or Khan Nguyen Soon or Project Khan, we find out that that's the case, all right? Um, we find out that, um, that uh, let me see what else. Um, you know, that the board can't get, uh, that the board can assimilate kinetic weapons, but just change the, I'm not going to get into the, I'm not going to get into the crazy of it. But there was a lot of things that happened in this season, all right, that had a lot to do with nothing, but the first episode and the last episode, if you were to, but, the thing is this, <clears throat> looking at the story in its entirety, I can understand episodes two through nine, all right? Because without episodes two through nine, there would be a lot of things that wouldn't make sense uh, if you had just put episode one and ten together, you know? But could they have been written better? Of course they could have been written better. But did it uh, did it help in the overall telling of the story the point that the things that they were trying to do and i would have to say yes and looking at the picard season two in its entirety all right as a whole story i really dug it i really it really shared a light and brung a great closing 
to a beloved character of the next generation of us and of Star Trek itself, you know, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, or as we should say, Admiral Jean-Luc Picard. Now, in season 10, I mean, in episode 10, we find out that, um, you know, Girardi has, of course, left, went 400 years, you know, left to go to the board collective in the Delta Quadrant. Um, she left everybody else on Earth in the past times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we find out that uh, Rios has decided to stay with the doctor, all right, and her son. And I knew that that was going to be something that they were going to put in the story as well. Now, the we go over um, the fact that Rios may, we learn from Guinan, who also makes her normal appearances by the character Whoopi Goldberg, uh, by the actress Whoopi Goldberg in this. And she ends up telling Picard, I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but just to tell the entirety of the story, like I said. But she ends up telling Picard about Rios and what ends up happening to him and his descendants and everything like that. And to go out on the bar floor, you know, uttering your last breaths into your cigar, that is Rios. But, uh, one second. You know, um, so, sorry about that. So, we go, in, you know, we introduce so much into this episode. The introduction of Wesley Cruster as the Traveler. You know what I mean? Like, and to have the Travelers be the organization or the group, I should say, that runs the Watchers, that places them throughout time. That is so cool because if you guys know the story of Wesley, we've always wondered whatever happened to him. You know, he became basically a god of space time. And we... we you never figure out what happens to him, you know, never on. They never mention pretty much anything else. And so to have him make an appearance was so cool. You know what I'm saying? And to induct uh, Dodge into the Watchers. Now, let's talk about what happens um, with Seven of Nine. Because, oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Because I wanted to talk about the conversation between Q and Captain Jean-Luc Picard. All right. Now, now, Captain Jean-Luc Picard and Q's conversation in the Arboretum or the Observatory, I should say. You know, there's not many things in Trek. Well, that gets me actually teary-eyed, you know. The conversation as to why um, Q has always been interested in Picard, the you know always shown Picard love, you know what I mean? Um, that explanation, you know, hey man, you know, I'm I'm doomed to die alone, you know what I mean? And I don't want that for you, okay? So of all the lessons that I've had to teach you, you know, this one. You know, I understand mortality and I don't want you to have to do that. And then to have Picard tell Q, you know, hey, man, look, I understand that. And, you know, I, you know, looking back at all of this, I understand that what you were actually doing was being a friend. You know what I mean? Like, and then to have Picard be like, you know, like, look, you're you're not going to be alone, man. You know, when you snap and you take us back, use the last of your energy and basically, you know, move on into nothingness or wherever it is that Q is going to be moving on to. Um, he actually gave him a hug. You know what I mean? Like, dude, this episode, and then to go to the future and have, uh, but El North, there, there we go, to pick back up at the situation where, they could have made the dis where they made the decision to hey you know what everybody Picard you know everybody stand down and everything because he knew who she was you know and the conversation that they had was so cool and she had came a long way as a board as uh, the Girardi queen um, in that four hundred year time span and to have that anomaly just pop up you know where they do the whole uh, you know form an umbrella get close to the anomaly and form an umbrella type uh, deflector in front of the anomaly with the discharge. 
It reminded me of that episode of in Atlantis, you know, where they did the same thing with I think with their Prometheus, you know, with a with a, a solar flare discharge. Like that's neither here nor there. Um, and then to have the Borg join the Federation. First of all, let's talk about the advantages of that. All right, because like I said in other videos, when dealing with Star Trek and its enemies. It's always a three-step process that they that all enemies in Trek go through. Cleons went through it, Romulans went through it, Cardassians went through it. You know, um, it, it's this. First, it's a conflict. It's a battle. All right. Then they're going to negotiate, and through that negotiation, they're going to find a way to become allies or coexist with you because that is the Star Trek way. All right, and this is the the inevitable step for the board in Star Trek. They have always historically been uh, the Federation's worst enemy, but so has the Klingons, and Worf is serving on the bridge. You know what I mean? Um, so has the uh, Romulans, and Elnor is a cadet in Starfleet. You know what I mean? So uh, there's always been that particular three-step process when dealing with enemies in Trek, and now the board is just the latest addition. And the Borg being of, you know, one drone, one or two drones being on each Federation starship, or especially in a fleet, would have drastic advantages as far as communications, as far as ship upgrades, all that kind of stuff. Because the Borg communicate almost instantly across subspace, you know. So, you know, having to wait, from, wait for transmissions from Starfleet, that would no longer be, you know, relevant. The size of the universe would be... I mean, the size of the galaxy was shrink tremendously because of the Borg transwarp conduits, you know? So, there's a lot of advantages, and you can always expand your security team, as they said in Voyager once. But, speaking of expanding security teams, to have Picard give Seven of Nine a battlefield commission to captain, when Ralphie is her first officer, what it seems, of the Stargazer, Go ahead, Seven. Go ahead, Picard. You know, because that was a sense of an... That was a issue with me as far as Seven never joining Starfleet. And she's a captain now. Captain Six of Nine. So, like I said, when I, when I look at this story as a whole, farewell, you know, it was an awesome story as a whole. Breaking up individually? No. Broken up individually? No. No. I do not, I couldn't in good conscience recommend two through nine, but episode one, episode 10, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I have to say, Picard still has one of the best Star Trek opening sequences that's ever been put to the series, season, you know, series. So let me know what you guys thought of Star Trek Picard season two. Uh, did it tell a complete story or a uh, bring finality to the character of John luc Picard? Did it give an overall sense of closure for that character and for the character of Q? You know, which from the beginning, they have always been the yin and yang of each other. All right. Um, and then what did you think of the understanding that Picard had of why me? You know, so leave you you know leave me some great comments you know like you guys always do if you guys haven't seen my review of strange new worlds episode one from season one please check it out because that was awesome as well and uh peace recycle say the whales you guys be cool